What's up guys? So I went through a lot of trouble to actually get this video out. I put a lot of time into the Battle Power ranking system because I haven't properly updated it in at least three to four months. And by properly updating, I mean I go through all the servers that I have accounts on and check the servers even if they don't meet the requirements. I just make a note of it and pretty much it's a reminder for myself to know, okay, this was the last Battle Power I see on the server. So I went through all my accounts and unfortunately a majority of them they really did get deleted just because i guess Go games has a system for accounts that are inactive for at least like three months or something if you don't go on them and they're under a certain level or i don't know what the requirement is exactly but they do get deleted so that's what happened to my a lot of my accounts and if you go to the video description below check out the bleach online battle power rankings there is a tab and the tab pretty much contains a server status those are all the servers I checked that I still have my accounts on and I kept it up to date. Uh, I will have to check that every month now just because otherwise those accounts will get erased. And I did lose a lot of accounts, probably like at least 80 accounts got deleted. So I can't check out the servers um, in case people don't make it on the list and they should be. Just always, you know, comment down below or just hit me up on the Discord and I'll make sure to make an account and, and do it then. But otherwise, I don't feel like uh, making new accounts for all the servers that I got erased. But moving on to a lot of interesting information. So we have, you know, Fuji, which pretty much managed to surpass Living God at this point. Uh, even though Living God was confirmed to be not a legitimate player, he has 11.8 million battle power, almost 12 million battle power, which is almost 8 a million over Living God himself. Now, even though Living God was only level 130 with all his stuff, um, Fuji reaching 12 million battle power, he has climbed way too much in a small amount of time. Within six months, he has almost gained around seven to eight million battle power and just reaches inc insane deaths. Uh, Nanami is still by far the fastest person as far as Bleach Online goes. I think around 1.8, 1.9 million speed on Raijin Yorichi. I have never seen Fuji put stuff on his Raijin Yorichi, so I'm not sure if he would be as fast or close to that. Um, but we have ourselves three people over 10 million. Mages joins in as the third. Eno also got a huge battle power increase from 9.5. He has been increasing a lot as well recently. Dante pretty much managed to slow down. As you can see here, the battle power rankings are slowly improving. Uh, maybe next month I'll try to put it up to 8 million battle power. Just because I'm really trying to keep it the list as small as possible. But people are already you know, surpassing the battle power limits way too fast at this rate. So there we have the US side. And Living God finally managed to get surpassed. Now moving on to the EU side, which a lot of accounts got <laughs> erased on the EU side. Uh, and I also did change it, so it's 7 million battle power and up on the EU. Rookie is very close to 10 million battle power, and then Yojimbo is holding it at second. Archon, as well as Ochi and Hayase, managed to climb up. You know, a lot of people are surprising me. EU is finally catching up to pretty much the US side, because we all know how insane the US side is when it comes to things. But the EU side is finally making up for it, making some fast advancements. Uh, 7 million has been boosted up. By next month, there will probably be more people at 7 mil, but I think I will keep... I will give EU a month extra over, you know, the US side, just because their servers came out longer. So US will probably be 8 mil by, by January, which will be a new year. And uh, EU will stay at 7 million battle power. And then Brawmaster also decided to change his name for no reason. Uh, literally calls himself DPOTY <laughs> for some you know amazing reason. But uh, then finally we have ourselves the VIP zero list, which surprised me because uh, Ichigo one twenty three used to be, I think rank three as far as all VIP zeros, and then he stopped being a VIP zero. He recharged, so it wasn't until Corey told me. But Asano Ayami from EU one hundred three is by far the strongest VIP zero player, and holds a very high arena rank compared to all of them as well. Level-wise, though, he is not that far ahead. Ben Walter is the highest-leveled VIP Zero. But honestly, it's really interesting to see how strong VIP Zeros can get. You have to have some serious dedication to actually pull this off. And I give VIP Zeros that played this game for as long as these guys the most respect. Now, in order to appear on a list for a VIP Zero, you need to have over 1.5 million battle power, and you need to give me your server name, your server... Uh, your server name as well as your server number and make sure you give me a screenshot of your entire profile showing that you have a VIP zero 
this is the only way I can actually make sure your VIP is your not a VIP. And you know, that concludes the very thorough check. And now we have ourselves, you know, I don't know how, but the test servers that Riton has access to really got the new events a lot sooner than they're supposed to. So we can see the next events before they even happen. And there's still like three or four days left. So we have ourselves Visor Revenge, Make Money Event, Ultimate Battle Power, which I believe there's no screenshot for it. And there's really not information. I could have sworn I seen something about a Muramasa. Uh, I would assume it's time for a Zanpakuto because they did at least two, three partners in a row. I can't remember the last time there was a Zanpakuto. So they're going to do a Zanpakuto now. I kind of have a feeling it is the Muramasa. Like I know I see a screenshot somewhere. I'm not sure if it was an old event or what, but I do believe it's a Zanpakuto. Mysterious puzzles, very good to get yourself Hogo Enhanced Talismans as well as level 4 Spirit Stone boxes. Pyramid got new rewards this time. Now you can get yourself a Handsome Toshiro as well as a Mayuri. I personally wouldn't recommend either of them. Mayuri is a very, he is a very underutilized assaulter. He is like a tank as an assaulter. Very interesting a PvP concept. And when he is stacked, you know, he's, he's a pain in the ass to kill. Then you also have Noble Isane in the Anniversary Feast. So they took out Ryu Jinjaka which was pretty much the perfect event to get it for 40k gold and you were getting stones and I believe that was last month as well and then moving on to the final parts which is probably the most exciting part for me you have ourselves the chair Eisen we finally have ourselves information regarding him so all we did know was about his character model his pa passive and his skill now we know he has humongous monstrous strength growth rate i mean you know we had a flying uh, we had raijin yorichi jugram that came out with very good growth rate sixes and sevens and then they throw out a chair aizen 9.6 strength growth rate which is by far insane this aizen will be doing at least twice to three times more damage than the your watch will be doing there are no inform there is no information about how you can get the chair Eisen, if it's an event, if it's from a function, no idea where you can get him from now. There's no information about that. But I can tell you, it is no joke. 9.6 strength growth rate. Although having such an amazing strength growth rate really takes a toll on his agility. He is a very slow assaulter. That is the only downside to him, but he does have 4.5 wisdom, so he will have nice keto defense. And he also has 6.2 stamina. So his HP, his strength, and wisdom are all pretty far up there for an assaulter. It's just that agility is a huge downside. But honestly, the game isn't a isn't a bad position for him. Even though he's very slow, you can still win with a support giving you the defense buff from Ryujin. Especially if you have a sexy Kukaku to protect him. So this Aizen is by far going to be a heavy hitter. Now you have to realize... This is a screenshot from Riton on the test server. It has no evolution. I don't think it has any exclusive. Um, and it also has no Zanpakuto equipped. So it's still 2.4 million power, 1.2 million physical attack, fully modded. Now the two mods are highlighted at the top right is the 50% attack, which is going to be shown on his profile. And then he has the ultimate modifier, which is only in battle, where he gets 100% attack power for five rounds. This Aizen is going to do too much more damage than the watch. Honestly, your watch is going to be dead once this Chair Aizen comes out. As far as damage, I think this Chair Aizen could even top Berserk Renji's damage. Just because of the massive growth rates, the huge attack boost to himself, his growth rate as well, 220%. He is just ridiculous. He really is. And then his Talon gives him an extra 20% strength, 25% damage rate, and has 20% extra stamina. So... Chair Aizen is definitely the move. Uh, we have ourselves a skill preview as well, which I will bring up for you. Now you guys will be seeing Aizen's own skill himself, which is basically, it's honestly terrible. Like, you, I do like the chair animation. Uh, you know, the visual effects are cool, but the skill itself is literally the same skill that they have for the CSB Aizen, the support version. It is exactly the same thing, except he's sitting down on the toilet and it is just honestly it's it's insane like they literally just copy and pasted that um you know it definitely did not work on the animation whatsoever you know it's just it, it the animation is honestly disappointing but his ability 
his damage, his strengths, his natural talents are going to be something completely just are going to basically change the game as far as assaulters go. Um, you know, being that much of a heavy hitter is honestly shocking, especially with a growth rate that far up. I don't know how the game ended up going to 9.6s like right off the bat after the you know supports like the growth rates are just jumping and they're very unique for every character but that covers off most of the parts that i wanted to talk about now we can actually get to doing some stuff on my account so guys we're finally on the actual game and you know i like to bring you guys some news some information every week uh you know that's why the bleach online videos at least feel fresh to me there's something new every week there's always events to talk about um, by at least week to week, I can at least achieve something in the game. And most of the time, I usually hear something from the forums or people on my Discord, so it's always nice to give you guys information from that. Uh, you know, it feels like we're getting a ton of information just so early this week because we already know the next events. And the new events are here just now, and I haven't even gotten a chance to look at them. So, the bargain sale event, I remember when this first came out, it was actually not a terrible idea. Um, you know, obviously you, spending stuff like this, the way it works is that you basically open the discount shop and purchasing items here, no matter what you purchase, will give you one credit. Then spending each credit allows you to basically go for anything in this shop. So the cheapest item I believe you can get is a level eight spirit stone box for 800 gold. So you, if you basically just keep buying these, you'd have to spend gold to refresh as well after you buy it out. So if you only spend for level 8 spirit stone boxes, you can get stuff fairly cheap. Uh, for instance, you can get yourself the... Well, I wouldn't say fairly cheap, but if you were to get 30 credits from spirit stone boxes, a noble Easton, they would be 32k gold. But, you know, she is in, like, anniversary feast and so many other events now where she was ridiculously cheap. Even when she came out, she was 18k gold. So I would honestly say that the credits, that the bargain sale event is the best to go for when it comes to the mod soul fragments i think this is definitely an event that focuses on this because mod soul fragments are mostly event gains and you can't really get some of them for instance when harry bell came out you were you are not able to get her fragments anywhere outside of these kind of events basically so this is your chance to get mod souls that's the only thing i'd actually focus on if i had to make a choice but then i'd actually go for items that you can use so even though spirit stones aren't bad to be like to be honest the gold one is by far the stupidest thing to go for because either way you're basically still spending 1k to get yourself the one credit when for instance you can get at least exclusive fragments for that so definitely never spend for the gold like, don't go for the coupons either focus on the other items around it and it should be go and then they basically bring back bankai kisuke who you know i i do like him as far as his uh, like effects go and character model but he is just not worth the price tag, to be honest. Uh, and then the cool thing is you also get 2k gold for recharging 4k. Now, you can only claim this once in the event after claiming the gift pack. Uh, I could have sworn last time you could have just kept redeeming this every time you recharge every day. Could be wrong, but that's when the event actually seemed like it was really cheap to get items. Now, I am 95 days away from my yearly sign-in. I have no idea what to spend my coupons towards. I guess I really wanted to give myself some agility stones and get some 12s for Hikifune, if anything. But I really wanted to change my formation. I have 2,000 gold left, which is pretty much two more uh, months of Shinigami Agent. Which, that's pretty much the only purpose I'm keeping it for. Once I run out of gold for Shinigami Agent... Then I might actually consider investing some gold back into the game. I personally, you know, would just love to change the um, change the team I'm using. I have been using the partners for way too long. I definitely, you know, kind of want to go away from supports as well. So I, what I was considering doing was trying to pick up a Kukaku. Uh, hopefully after I recharge, which can be sometime in the future. I can basically just hope that there's going to be an event to get Kukaku from. For around the same price, maybe like 18k, 17k. Since she came out for that cheap in the Lucky Draw event, she has been unheard of, unseen for that price. So next time she drops into the Lucky Draw event, definitely pick her up. 
Uh, and, you know, it would just be very interesting. Plus, Kukaku is basically a cheat code to when it comes to winning in this game. You can literally win every single fight if you just have a Rijin Jaka Zanpakuto and a very stacked Kukaku to the point where she will survive everything that comes your way and you just, you just feed her everything. And if she has, you know, the more mods, the better, just because she gets a lot of defenses for that. So by far, you can win the game alone just with a sexy Kukaku and a Ryuji. Now, obviously, it won't be like a 99% win chance, but you will have a very high win chance with that team. I have seen King, who is fighting people like Nanami and Marikana and all these, like, you know, all these top players that you've seen in the battle power list a few, like, 10 minutes ago. So you will basically know that if he uses a team like that, as well as his stack, Namaya, um, probably by far one of the strongest Yetsu Namayas in the game. Over 1.1 million speed, over 1 million, I think, keto attack as well, or something like that. Just super crazily stacked. And, you know, he wins most of the fights because of the Kukaku and the Ryujin alone. So Ryujin is by far a broken Zanpakuto. I'm kind of looking forward to what the next Zanpakuto could be. Like, what if they do a Kiyoka Suigetsu, where it pretty much chaoses the entire team? Or they do, like, Nozarashi, or they do Benihime. Personally, there's just a lot of choices they can do. Uh, but it will be a matter of time what they decide to go for in the end anyway. Now, I have 24k Vitality stacked up. Honestly, I was thinking of dumping it during Serite attack. Uh, the goal would have been, you know, to spend around like 10k Vitality, one, ser one Serite attack, spend another 10k in the other Serite attack. And this way I can basically maximize the amount of level 8 stones I could get. But 10k doesn't win it anymore. Just because, for some dumb reason, they merged all the servers into Ultimate Battle Power. Uh, and actually, I just realized Ultimate Battle Power is continuing. So it is Miramasa, yeah. Okay, so I was like, for some reason, I did not see the Ultimate Battle Power icon uh, when it was happening, and a few people are actually going for Miramasa. But this is what I'm talking about. They merged all the servers from server one up until mine in the Ultimate Battle Power. I guess it works for it works for Serate attack. I guess it also works for Ultimate uh, Recharge. So they really screwed up the entire community the way that works. But last event cycle, we had ourselves that uh, event where basically that thing, this, the terrible Thanksgiving event, where if people were recharging, they were basically getting, you know, the treasure chests in uh, for their server. Now, I think that they linked all the servers up because the first day we had over like 80k gold topped up overall. So I can say that they definitely linked up all the servers and because of that, it's really going to make it tough for the game when it comes to winning the ranking rewards. Now it's going to be even harder to get the rank 1. You're going to have to go for at least 50k points. Uh, going for um, Serate attack as well, you're going to probably need like 12 to 15k Vite just to go ahead and win yourself. So it is a, you know, it's kind of a disappointment. And on the bright side though, Tournament of the Throne is kind of working. Now, the only time it actually finished was over here because it's literally one person going all the way to the end. And then the other ones get stuck in the finals. Uh, we have ourselves, you know, a bunch of fights. You know, you have yourself yours truly. I actually did manage to win the first fight and I could show you the battle reports. So let's just, let's just go see what happened. So the, the Tournament of the Throne is semi-working. Now, Raiden did say that this week they managed to correct a lot of the issues. So this week it doesn't fully work, but by next week it should actually perfectly work. It will do all the rounds. You can actually bet properly. You can also get yourself uh, coupons. You'll actually get them back. So the Tournament of the Throne is supposed to work by next week uh, for the US side, hopefully. We haven't had Tournament of the Throne work even one time. And it was honestly a disappointment because it's a great feature. You can get a lot of good rewards. We couldn't take part in it for the first you know, three weeks or whatever it was, a month now. And EU is basically getting in on the fun. So now the US side is getting into it. Would definitely love to see all the top players fight it out. Uh, this fight, you know, was just damn. A lot of stuff was happening. I think I had way less battle part and LSB as well. But I did have the speed advantage and just Namaya's damage is honestly crazy. Uh, but I'm glad Tournament of the Throne is supposed to be fixed. So you can see here is almost a 2 mil battle power difference 
And the reason why is because look at all the rewards. I am in the Master Reincarnation Seed. So assuming I get uh, 8 away, it doesn't matter. So if I go 5th to 8, we will give me 300 exclusives, which is very nice. Reincarnation Stones, which I kind of don't mind getting right now. I've, I'm really low on Reincarnation Stones and I need to get more. Soul Refines and Soul Stones. I also place, yeah, I place 7th as far as Battle Power goes for that. And I think that's how it works. It's going to be as far as Battle Power to queue you in and then all the fights you're going to win. But since it's properly not here, you really won't be able to find out what you're going to get. So hopefully next week they do resolve this. We can start getting rewards. I can bet pretty much for my CSB, it's going to be a vote for Furia or Coco. I don't know why he changed his name. But pretty much vote for him. You get yourself easy coupons every time. That's, that's going to be the plan. So, you know, we, we got to get that sponsorship going for him. Make sure we keep getting more coupons. Uh, Soul Palace, you know, it's nice to get the extra 20 Vitality from here. I pretty much haven't been doing Conquest of Might outside of the uh, Reincarnation one. And I have, you know, I just keep... I, just, I can't be bothered doing CSB. I need to realize... Okay, I, th I forgot which date it is. I think it's December 8th or 7th, one of those days. I need to make sure I basically register the first day of CSB and then I might be motivated enough to actually do it. Uh, I still need to keep doing Huacomundo. I have done Huacomundo one time in the past month, which is more times than I did it in the past three months, so I'm kind of proud of myself for that. But I need to really get myself Nozarashi and then I can finally call it quits. It has been my goal since the start of the game, but since I got Ichibe and I kind of ditched my Vanguards, I just really didn't want to finish it. But now I want to finish it. I'm not too far off. Less than 500 coupons to go, which shouldn't be too long. Maybe another month, uh, maybe less than that. Bonds as well. I would like to get myself a pure T1 so I can easily clear this out because on the Brazil side, which I forgot to give you an update on the Brazil account, I am st I'm still on the account. I am not banned. It has pretty much safely been a week so far. Uh, people did tell me that, you know, they don't ban you on Brazil. They just prevent you from topping up. But I did check the recharges and I'm still able to recharge. So I don't know. I'd say it's still too soon to call it, but, you know, so far surviving at least five, six days. I can say the account is still standing and it's still being worked on. Uh, but just in case, you know, it, we can't recharge on the account anymore, which I have no plans to recharge anyway, no matter what happens on Brazil. Uh, again, basically went back to using Nemo and the BP drop was real. When he went from Raijin Yorichi to Nemo, there was like a 600k battle power drop. That's how overpowered she is. I I would really be looking forward to honestly getting Regin and a sexy Kukaku if I had a chance to change my formation. Uh, the only downside is it's going to basically put a waste to my cotton. And that's kind of the reason why I'm not looking forward to changing my whole formation based on that. But outside of that, if I really want to get myself to have more fun, I should do that. And it would basically be easier wins. And the, the support meta is honestly really boring, so I would, I would look forward to that. Uh, but it's a huge investment, and you know, it's even harder, because if I want to change my formation, I should win ultimate charge. But it could really screw me over if I have to compete against all 317 servers that are a part of me. I'm not sure if I saw this last Ultra Hero, but I can't remember Isane, Mayuri, or Koga being there. I c maybe Koga was there, but I can't remember these two. Uh, so that's kind of neat they added these two. Isan is honestly a boss. She is an underrated uh, partner. But I do say she's really good. You know, she's a healer. She doesn't do any damage. She just buffs and heals and stays full fury. But she's a very, you know, tanky support. She has high strengths or decent strengths and then high wisdom as well. So she does lack the agility, but she does have the survivability when it comes to that. As well as her modifies, which basically return her own HP. Uh, the partner choices in this game do just bug me a little because, you know, some partners just have no common sense and some partners are just completely trash, but they're still going to release them. So now I'm at the point where I have 3,600 reincarnation stones. I was saving up to 4k to get Namayo, but I do think I should reincarnate my main character. Uh, mostly because, you know, he has the XP, it doesn't go past 159. It will keep going to zero once we refresh the game. So I think I'm going to finally get myself the second main character reincarnation. Uh, once I get up to 159 again, I will do the third reincarnation. 
And just pretty much the purple is going to match cotton. I also did notice that the arena chest, it is still in Chinese over here, but when you redeem it, it actually says it in English, which I could have sworn it was also a slight problem in the Chinese version, or it was basically in Chinese text as well. So I'm not sure if it was just me, but I could have sworn that was a small change. My mod soul journey is going very slow. I managed to get my Batman level 60, and I can get very close to 61. I basically need to get myself level 80 Batman to go for Gin. And uh, I need to also get my Goku mod soul to level 60. So getting the Gintama mod soul is going to be rough. No idea how long it's going to take me, but you know, last week I finally saw Holmes, which Mari kind of had. You can only imagine, it took two years to get that. Uh, it's definitely not an easy road. I do hate myself for getting this stupid house upgrade. I can't do Konso. Even if it takes like 15 seconds with an auto clicker, it is still the like one of the most annoying things I have to do every day if I was actually looking forward to it. Uh, but besides all this stuff, I you know I have to basically put more attention towards the battle power of my you know account. I honestly did not check the battle power stuff. You can still see my you you will see my bags. All right, there's there's way too many materials, way too many spirit stones that I should go through. Uh, you know, I have just way too many things. I remember last time, I don't know when it was last time, but I did open like over 1,500 of these soul talismans. And I got a ton, a ton of these Maga Spirit Stone packs from that. Keep thinking of Naruto at this point, but it is 4 in the morning, guys. You, you have to cut me some slack. <laughs> uh, we have ourselves over, almost over 3k Asachi, which I think I need 4k to manage and get myself the next equipment upgrade which the next equipment upgrade is going to be the um what is it though one another oh 90 set yeah it's gonna be the 90 set for hikifune so that's basically the next upgrade i do have to also refine everything else and i probably should get the fortifies up i just need to know what should i spend my silver on at the same time i wouldn't mind going for a few Reyatsu levels Go for a few fortifies, but, you know, it's kind of nice having the silver stacked up there. It's, it's, it's pleasant to see. My team, honestly, has really not developed whatsoever in the recent times. And I'm honestly struggling when it comes to reincarnation stones. So I need to make sure I keep doing Conquest of Might. I never even tried for a higher difficulty. I would like to try for Nightmare Soul Society and Nightmare Zanpakuto. Um, You know, Inferno is probably way out of my league. But Nightmare should seem possible, and it may be hard for Agent of Shinigami, but it is... It feels like it would take too much time for me to actually go through that and take care of it. So that's why I haven't been focusing on that, or even attempted it, at least. I have my Angel's Bell title from the last events, and, you know, there's just no reason to use it. I'm really happy with the Mugetsu title. I'm at 136k prestige, and it's pretty much going to stay in the positive, just because of the Arena Rank 1 chest and double prestige. But it's just, yeah, it's, it's basically going to be taking prestige every day. So I'll be slowly gaining. I have seen somebody like Mugetsu with over a million prestige stacked up. So don't have to worry about that. Uh, but these these are all the Spirit Stones. And we have some level 5 tier Hogus we can get rid of. Uh, way too many stones. I mean, I almost have 200 level 3 dodges. <laughs> 200 level 3 dodges, almost 200 level 3 blocks. Since I dished my Vanguard, they're kind of going to stack up for a long time. Uh, no idea when, you know, I need to really get a video out where I just focus on battle power, focus on the new Conquest of Might, just so I can at least progress somewhere, and just focus on raising my power. Um, the highest I had was 4.5 million, or 4.51 million, before I reincarnated my, I think it was Hikifune to drop levels. But outside of that, you know, it's just feels like it, it will take too much time for me to make some progress in this account. Uh, you know, the guild is so active. And that's the thing I hate about this, the guild system in Bleach. Why can't we get a treasure system, like a treasure tree, uh, treasure tree system like Unlimited Ninja has, where you can get free spirit stones or something like that? And why can't we even donate more than 35,000 silver every day? Like, at least add two zeros to that. Then it would actually be easy to upgrade the group. Um, doing such small donations is just terrible when it comes to that. 
So I have all these materials stacked up, all these evolutions. 24k vitality, I really don't have any plans for it. Uh, since it's Muramasa now, I do not need Muramasa because I already have it anyway. I don't need any Zanpaktos. Even if Tensa Zangetsu came to ultimate battle power, I would skip it. The only thing I'm looking forward to is getting a replacement for Kuriji. Sorry, for getting a replacement for Kuriji himself. Or, I don't even know, or spending it on Serite attack and improving all my stones, because my stones aren't the greatest. Uh, you know, my Hikifuni has all the highest agilities, but her wisdoms are lacking. And then the Maya has the highest wisdoms, which are all, I think, 10s anyway. It's nothing higher than that, and then only level 9 agilities and level 8, so... The struggle is real, plus my third support could use a lot of stones as well. So it's not a bad idea investing in the stones. Although if I do plan to go Vanguard route, uh, the Vanguard route eventually, it's gonna be something I have to change into. But the other problem with you know getting a new team set up is I would have to spend this vitality for the evolutions if I were to change my team out and upgrade it. I didn't even finish my evils on my current team, but you know it's just not a problem at this point. I really just want to stack vitality and just get something cool. Looking for anything that could just change the game, so. Bankai Rukia, you know that I'm still praying for that to come out in one of the Ultimate Battle Power events. Maybe we'll see it in like six years. Uh, but that should wrap up the video. You know, I did give you guys a lot of information. I did say a lot of things. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will be seeing you guys next week with the next video. Hopefully some more stuff happens. Uh, you know, hopefully the Thanksgiving events were pretty trash. So I'm praying that the Christmas events will redeem the game. Last year's Christmas events were very good. They had the Christmas Ichigo in the, you know, like a mini Ultimate Battle Power event for Christmas. Then they also had themselves a event where you basically uh, purchase ninjas at a very fair price, I would say. And I forgot what the first part was, but there was three parts to it. I think the first part was just doing some random stuff to get yourself the Angel's Bell title and all this kind of free items. So I'm hoping that the Christmas event will redeem Thanksgiving, will redeem Go Games and just make the players happy. But, you know, that's, that's all I have for this week, guys. I'll see you next week.